let's look at how we use matrices to represent data and to be able to mathematically operate on it in a meaningful way. So in this session, we're going to attempt to answer three questions. First of all, what indeed is a matrix? Secondly, why are these useful? And finally, how can you use them to actually represent data? So let's start with that first question. What actually is a matrix? And the plural of matrix is matrices. And it, it simply is a way to organize information. In our society today, we live in the information age. There is tons and tons of information to be mined and used to help make decisions in order to make our society a better place, constantly innovate and improve. So matrices are organized into rows and columns. They appear as rectangles uh, of data. The rows are horizontal data. For example, let's say I was trying to look at the sales of electronic books over last year's Thanksgiving week and these sales are in millions of dollars. We looked at Kindle's data and Nook's data and we looked at the data over the days Wednesday, Thursday and good old Black Friday. Kindle on Wednesday had 104 million then 68 million on Thursday then 768 million on Friday. Nook had the data you see there. We can organize in this into a matrix where the rows, the horizontal data, represent each type of electronic book. So this would be a row, this row of Kindle data, as would the row of Nook data. So the horizontal data is in rows and represents, in this case, the sales for each device. The columns are the vertical data and they represent the different days of Thanksgiving week. And there's no hard and fast rule as to what rows and columns are going to do. It depends on your situation and how you want to set it up. You are totally in control of your matrix. So why indeed are matrices useful? I'll give you some examples. One of the major uses of matrices matrices is in what's called graph theory, the ability to look at networks of things and analyze the relationships between them. Here's an example from biology. And a major source of DNA mutations is what are called single nucleotide polymorphisms. And what you see here on the left is a double helix DNA. And then this is a representation of what one of these mutations looks like, the single nucleotide polymorphism or SNP. Well that can be turned into a network of nodes and each of these nodes has a relationship with the other nodes in the SNP and those relationships can be related through a matrix where zero means that that particular node doesn't have any conflict with another and a one means it does. And so the, the task here is to, to find which parts of this DNA mutation you can actually take out and take out the minimum to relieve the source of the mutation. So matrices can help us put information into a neat form that we can use to analyze relationship. Another major use of matrices is in social network analysis. If we look at data of networks of people, for example your Facebook use, Facebook can look at the people you're in contact with the most often and develop networks to analyze and develop matrices to analyze that data to help you get your data faster to help you connect with people faster. They can turn, for example, here's a four person network, Bob, Carol, Ted and Alice. They can look at the contacts between them, turn those into a matrix and do all kinds of analysis on that data to help Facebook more Rapid loading, more relevant. Google, for example, uses this to power the search engine on which you practically use every day. All search engines, Google, Bing, whatever, 
use a form of network analysis to figure out which hyperlinks are the most useful for your particular search. It's done billions and billions of times a day. The computations all involve matrices that link searches with metadata to help power those, those searches. That's how you can make searches of data in fractions of a second because of that matrix analysis. So let's look at a, an example. How can you use them in your life to represent data? Let's say you were trying to track data from some November 2013 movies, and this is actual data. You can see the link right there. And you were trying to track how many millions of dollars these movies were bringing in on the first day, second day, and third day after their release. And these are four movies that were released in November of 2013 and their data. So Catching Fire, the big Hunger Games movie, on the first day of its release got $70.95 million. Second day, 52.62. Third day, 34.51. And here are the other three movies. So there's kind of a three-step process in using matrices, at least initially setting them up to represent the data. First is deciding what your row, rows and columns are going to represent. Often, if your data is already in a table, a good way to begin is use the rows and columns in that table. Then, create the matrix one row at a time. Finally, you need to establish your matrix's dimensions. And the way we do that in matrices is it's the number of rows times the number of columns. So let's apply that to this example. So the first thing we see here is that each row is a movie. Catching Fire, Thor Dark World, Best Man Holiday, and Ender's Game. Each one of those represents a movie. So why don't we just let the rows represent movie? And the next thing we notice is that each column is a day. So on day one, you see the data here. Thor Dark World, 16.76 million. Best Man Holiday had 12.27 million on opening day. And Ender's Game, 10.75 million on opening day. Then the days two and three are also columns. So then what we're going to do is create the matrix one row at a time. So here's our first row, the Catching Fire data. Our second row, Thor Dark World data, Best Man Holiday data, and Ender's Games data. So we now have created our matrix one row at a time. We're going to call our matrix M because it's movie data. And matrices have brackets on them, like I'm drawing. So let's call our matrix M, capital M, and we're going to set it equal to the matrix that you see there. Finally, what are its dimensions? Well. This matrix has one, two, three, four rows and one, two, three columns. So we're going to say that M is a four by three matrix. So what kind of things can we do with this data? Well, we're going to get more into that later when we deal with operations on matrices, but there are several things you can do. You could add up the box office on particular opening days. You could add up the box office totals for a movie over time. You know, we could, we could collect, and they're collecting data on all these movies every day. We can use it to compare the different movies. We can look at trends. How is opening day different from day two for all movies? We can make predictions for what day four, exact, for example, is going to look like. So there's a ton of data we can mine from this, making predictions about how much movies are going to make. So that's a little bit about what matrices are about, how they're useful, and how we can use them to represent data. Matrices are very critical in our complex information age.